Welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. We have cleared out this uh, deadly passage area and uh, we are going to move on to wherever Mager Varn wants us to go. I don't think there is anything of interest on these corpses. I think I looted everything that was of interest. Yep, I did. Let's move on. kind of weird to have the uh, Baron doing the moving for us and deciding where we want to go. City of Hollow Eyes, okay. This once quiet glade in the heart of the plains of Dunsward now resembles a low rocky shore braced for the crash of a menacing wave. A team of centaurs tower above a handful of people, scraping the ground and rising to their hind legs from time to time. They seem nearly ready to trample their frightened prey into the mud. Noticing your party, a woman in simple peasant clothes breaks away from the group and throws herself at Magar's feet. Your grace, Baron Varn, our prayers have been answered. We are the villagers of Old Stump. We wanted to build a farm in these lands, but we barely started digging the cellar when these monsters appeared. A muscular centaur with black hide and dark hair leans forward, thrusting out his chest and nearly trampling the woman. How louder! The more of your kin you call forth, the fewer will have to root out from their holes. Magar raises his hand in a powerful gesture, drawing everyone's attention. What is it you want from these people? What do we want, Two-Legged? You ask this, after everything your kin has done? You come to this land uninvited, dig up the ancient graves and attack us, the guardians of the land. What do we want? We want to clean the world of your of the dirt you spread. Let's do the law religion. Look closer at the, at the symbols that the centaurs are wearing. Succeeded. All the centaurs have centaurs have pendants or signs depicting the moon, the symbol of Desna in her aspect known as Mother Moon. Examine the centaur's gear. Oh, succeeded that as well. By the signs and patterns on their weapons and clothes, you recognize them as belonging to the Noman tribe, a warlike clan of centaurs that long ago settled in these lands. In ages past, the tribe fought back the Taldans, who tried to settle the region and were almost completely wiped out. The Noman haven't shown themselves for a long time, but they hardly hold any warm feeling towards you. Be easy, brave protector of the Norman tribe. I know that you share no bonds of friendship with the two-legged, but we are not Taldans. We are not the invaders who you once fought and killed. Ah, and more the pity we are not Taldans. At least they knew how a ruler should behave on territory he plans to continue calling his own. Easy, Sefal. Elric is right. I've always thought it a good sign when hostile parties begin with conversation rather than an arrow in the face. If you will spend your time insulting us, stranger, then you will surely spend a moment more to explain in detail what my race and my subjects might have done to offend you. What have we here? A two-legged with reason and dignity? Not like these others. They are deaf to our warnings. The centaur nods at the settlers. Fine. I will tell you. I will use the words of the ancient songs and of Aekora, Silverfire, who sees far further than any of your sages and rulers. We are the guardians of this land, and it is imbued with evil. The centaur speaks in a measured melodic voice, carefully reciting a sacred teaching. Evil sleeps here, under each burial mound, under each obelisk with one-eyed skulls, and you, two-legged, dig this ground like moles, stealing secret treasures from the ancient graves and tempting their dread magic. You will ruin all. The one who sleeps must continue his slumber. The caged one must remain behind bolt and bar. Do you understand, two-legged one? I'm giving you a chance to take this rubble and leave. 
Go away from the city of hollow eyes, away from the burial mounds, away from the obelisks and the other cyclops ruins. If you turn away from the past, the Noman tribe will leave you in peace. Well, that's just wonderful. By a rough estimate, he just demanded that we relinquish two-thirds of the barony, including the most fertile fields and mines. Only the barren rocks in the mountains are free from Cyclops ruins. <laughs> um, I don't want any bloodshed. We must come to an agreement. Magar nods. Listen, stranger, we, we cannot simply leave this land, but if your tribe will stop threatening the settlers, I will forbid them from entering the Cyclops' tombs. My soldiers will patrol the area and punish any trespassers. I would also like to meet the chiefs of your tribe. We should learn to live side by side. I would also like to learn more about the evil that sleeps here. The Noman tribe is led by warrior priestess Aikora Silverfire. The centaur speaks boldly, then frowns. I do not believe a word you say, human, but I will give you a chance. If the two-legged keep their noses out of the tombs, then we will let them remain. Let them plant their orchards and build their homes. But if a single one breaks our agreement, there will be trouble. You have been warned. Hunters, follow me. At the moment the centaurs have left, Cephal sheds his nonchalant mask and turns angrily to Magar. What were you thinking? These creatures are unpredictable savages and from what we hear fanatics as well. As soon as a trade caravan unknowingly stops at a wind-worn cyclops stale, or children run inside a tomb when playing hide and seek, they will return and bring ch carnage with them. My friend, you can only make deals with equals, with those who think as you do, but not with half-humans who attack villages because of their primeval, primeval fables. And you would prefer to slaughter them all and be done with it? Until we discover their motives and learn their location and numbers, wouldn't you think it wiser to proceed with caution? This doesn't sound like you, old friend. You would execute a small patrol on a whim to watch all of Varnhold burn tomorrow? No. We must learn what we can of their motives and determine the need for an armistice. But do not imagine me blind to menace these centaurs, po centaurs pose to our villages. I will take any steps necessary to protect them, but that does not include slaughtering an entire patrol or ultimately a whole tribe simply because centaurs lack all, at all skill at diplomacy. Your Grace, about the tombs, our younglings did go there, to that huge stone vault sticking out of the ground, to the south. Magar turns pale. When? Damn it! I only just promised the centaurs that none of us would set foot in the tombs. If they spot those fools poking around, there will be trouble. General, Regent, let us go to that huge stone vault. Yes, that gives us something to do. Like I failed. <laughs> Not that I expect that anyone were surprised by such a development. I'll go ahead. <laughs> Enemy near. On your knees. Primal Manticore. Chain shirt plus two. Does anyone want that? You prefer light armor. I think you prefer light armor as well. Bar a bard. You can use medium. A breastplate plus one. Better than that one.
This is a rather large map. The path is clear. Um, injured dragon. But the dragon towers over you like a giant rock. His scales are blue to rival the sky, and the neck proudly arches. But one wing sticks out at a strange angle, and his sides are torn and ragged, covered in acid burns. Oh, guests. Please, come closer. Don't fear. We can help each other. But the dragon utters the words with obvious effort, looking cautiously around. A greetings to you, Sir Polite Dragon. What ill fate brings you to my dominions? Please spare my bluntness, human. For someone like me, your dominions are just a word. I dash through the sky, cutting across the dominions of princelings and kinglet every moment, and over my lifetime your borders will change two hundred times, and then two hundred times more. The dragon snorts loudly, the closest he can come to laughter given his, con given his condition. A valid point. But then please spear my bluntness as well. Most rulers wouldn't want an unknown dragon in their dominions, especially a blue one like you. Your kind is not known for its... kindness. A polite way to say that we usually exterminate and rob your kin, the dragon snorts out another laugh. I would be happy to spare you my presence, but I am unable. Do you see what has happened to my wing? Only my stubbornness got me over the mountains, but it won't take me any further. My wounds are painful. The acid continues to burn, and the magic stings and stings. Damn Nilthuliak is not above robbing and devouring other dragons, but I escaped, and I'll be healed before she finds me again. All I need is an artifact from the stash here, hidden under these slabs. Bring me its wholesome magic and I will repay you, and yes, I will take myself far away from here. Magar turns to you and Sethal. Do you say? Whatever else he may be, he's a living creature and he's in trouble. It shouldn't be difficult to help him, and if he betrays us, well, we know what to do with traitors. I don't like the idea of doing battle with a dragon on a whim, but I don't stand for giving him a precious artifact. I'm in a generous mood, so I'll heed the general. Sir Polite Dragon, what is this artifact you require? It is here, under these slabs. It is guarded by protective magic, but there must be a way to get past. Return to me here, I will be waiting. Centaur didn't meet a good end. Over here. Have a look. What do you mean it is here under these slabs? Looks like a zombie, but it's just a bandit with two masterwork daggers. Tread lightly. Their life ends here. A solid plan. <laughs> You see enough? Let us be careful. Okay, so there's some kind of puzzle going on here. Oh, jeez. There are heavy impact marks on the stone surface. Someone recently pried something out of here.
Okay. Guess we need to find a crystal then. A cyclops. We shall overcome. Well, they didn't exactly survive. I don't need that great axe, so we can stop that. I don't think you want to go all the way alone there, Megar. There you are, two-legged. What do you say now? You tried to make us drop our guard while your spies got inside the tomb. The centaur knocks an arrow holds his bow close at the ready, then aims at a boy of about 18 who can barely stand from fear. I did no such thing. Magar is grim and serious. Look at them. They are adolescents, silly youths, adolescents, silly youths who snuck into a creepy dungeon, and they did it before we made our agreement. Exactly. They were already on their way, and none of you knew about it? Neither you nor your subjects? The songs that rise inside me were written long ago by the great shamans and warriors of the past. I hear their voices saying, keep away, don't trust, be vigilant. And these songs are about you. <coughs> Do you care about your tribe, Norman warriors? If so, then think. You are about to shed the blood of younglings. They're almost children. It is the same as declaring war. In an instant, the centaurs have readied their weapons. You lie, and squirm, and now you threaten us. I have heard enough. To arms, brothers and sisters. That was unfortunate. If you play um, on your own, um, don't be afraid of safe scumming things like that if you want the best outcome. I'm not going to do that in, uh, in this series though, except if there's something really horrible. So we got uh, Heavy Shield plus two, let's put that on Elric. We also got an amulet of natural armor. I think this guy wants that as well because his armor class is really horrid. Where is he in the... Yeah, he's in the front. Ring of protection. I guess that doesn't stack. It does. for the other stuff we looted. Maybe the hide armor is useful for someone. No. I will not falter.
There we go. May is just might as well just uh, loot the place then. There's a slab, but nothing of interest. This is a rather large map. I have mentioned that a few times. I think it's one of the biggest one we've been in so far. You should have run. Very random enemies here. Composite bow. Masterwork, 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 and masterwork. Strike! Stand with me. Oh dear. Um. Let's summon... on them. Heavy shield plus two. Wound of cure moderate wounds. That's useful. Let us not hesitate. Now we really need you to if you can do cure serious wounds, please. Thank you. And then a regular light wounds. Perfect. Also cast bless, please. We will prevail. What the heck is this? Another ring of protection. Let's give that to her. Helm of the Guiding Light. That is a useful thing. Who has the highest perception? You have plus 12, plus 10, 7, 7, 11, 2. Okay. You Give it to her then. Too bad she doesn't have law nature addition to that. Maybe we should give it to um, Andre instead. Spriggan. Whom we 
we cannot interact with. Hail Yan. A large group of thugs, armed to their teeth, approaches you openly. The one in front walks with a swagger. He's a tall man, and the right half of his face is covered in an intricate pattern of scars and tattoos. Captain Varn, or rather Baron Varn. I had a feeling that you'd appear here sooner or later. I've been looking forward to this moment. You can call me Pale Jan. I am the leader of this honourable society of freedom-loving travellers. <laughs> it's an amazing place, my barony. Even the barons here are surprisingly polite and well-spoken. Magar seems completely nonchalant. A barony usually suits its ruler. The bandit smiles broadly, then scoffs. I wouldn't be talking to any of those smug nobles from Brevoy or Pitax, but the glory of Varnling Host precedes you, so I'm making an exception. I have a business proposal for you. Information and my lad's swords in exchange for a share in the loot, and your lady law will turn her blind eyes elsewhere for now. Closer at the gang. The gang appears excellently armed and equipped, however, the bandits have obviously just come from a fight. Most are scratched and wounded, their clothes torn, and what's more interesting, several have burns left by fire or electricity. Just to get this straight, some person or creature fried your gang until they sizzled, and now you want your, our help to get the better of them. Agar laughs softly. General, don't swallow him whole right away. Leave a few pieces for the rest of us. You have good eyes, General. I wonder if they see the potential benefits of such an arrangement, or can't you see past my singed pride? Oh, the pun. I'll tell you the whole story. A while ago, a small group of locals were lucky enough to witness the spectacle of a lifetime. Two dragons fighting above the wastelands. One of them appeared to be the legendary Ithuliak. That old viper hasn't left her nest for a long time. Of course, she won the battle, and her opponent narrowly escaped. Wounded, it struggled eastward, and somehow got over the tours of Levenes, and finally ended up here. He's been sitting in the middle of the Cyclops' ruins for a few days, and doesn't seem ready to leave. This is an urgent matter, Sir Varn. You have a bloody dragon in your dra barony. Wounded, but still most deadly. He killed a few centaurs, we saw it with our own eyes. It won't be long before your villagers cross his path, and that will be a bloodbath. My lads wouldn't stand a chance against the monster, although we are ready to fight if we must. You and your current party couldn't beat him either. But if we joined forces, we might take down the beast, and share between us the treasures and artifacts it's taken from the ruins. I promise you, afterwards we will leave your lands and do our work somewhere far, far away. A tense silence hangs in the air. Megar doesn't speak, either pondering his thoughts or awaiting a reaction from you and Cephal. We can't abandon our principles no matter what is at stake. No deals with bandits. Cephal starts to rub his hands together, apparently preparing for a fight. Captain Varn has spent most of his life fighting bandits and murderers. I wouldn't want Baron Varn to commence his rule with an ill-fated partnership with them. Forgive me, Sir Palejan. In appreciation for your politeness, I suppose I shall grant your widow a pension, if you have one. That's that. Oh, my. Hello. I think we've got to loot that. We did.
shock dagger plus one and ring of protection plus one. But I think we need to end the episode there. So thank you all so much for joining me. And uh, I hope that you enjoy this little uh, side trip from the main campaign. I'm finding it highly amusing. So I will see you all next time then.